Hi guys, in this video I'm going to talk about uh, variables more and specifically how to declare them in a single line and then some common errors that you encounter when you're working with variables. So last time in the variables video we saw that you want to declare your variables like this with a dim and the name of the variable and then the type of the variable as and then the type. And that we saw that um, you know that's because variables take up space in memory and you want to have as little space uh, you want to use as much as little space as possible so you want to declare all your variables and if you did something like this uh, not declare a variable uh, then you would run into a problem because when you put option explicit at the top you'd run into a problem if you didn't put option explicit at the top you wouldn't run into this problem if I take it out uh, you don't run into this problem so it'll work fine, but remember that we saw that this variable, my variable, is now down here in locals window. It's a variant variable, and we don't want that. Uh, so that's what we saw last time. So I'm just going to declare my variables here. Dim my variable as integer. But now um, I want to show you what, what you can do if you have a lot of variables and you want to declare a lot of variables so let's say you have 30 variables well if you do it like this and you do dim you know my uh, I'll just put var2 as integer if you do it like that well then you're gonna have like 30 lines of var3 var3 as integer so is there a way if you have like 30 variables to, to put them in one line meaning can you do something like this instead of doing this erase that and is it possible to do something like this? Uh, var2, comma var3. Let's see if this is possible. Um, so if we step through this now, I'm just trying to declare multiple variables in one line. And if I step through it, you'll see that my variable, you know, we declared them all as integer. But down here in the locals window, we can see my variable is a variant, and so is var2 uh, that's a variant right here and then var3 is the only one that is an integer so what this means is when you declare a variable like that when you declare variables like this you might think you're getting all integers but you're actually not um, the only variable that is an integer here is this variable right here var3 it's the only variable that's an integer these other variables right here are variants. They're equivalent to not declaring your variable at all. So what you need to do when you declare a variable in a, in a single line is put is declare them as something like this as integer and then you could put a comma and then you could put as integer. So that's how if you had 30 variables you want to declare your variables. So let's let's step through this now and make sure that they're all integer variables. And sure enough the first three variables here my variable var2 and 3 var2 and var3 if we scroll over the type in memory they're all integers and that's exactly what we wanted so that just proves that when you want to uh, declare multiple variables you want to do it like this dim the dim the name of the variable as integer and then a comma and you could leave off the dim so basically you don't need to put the dim there now let's say that you keep writing all these variables but you get uh, you want to go to the other line so you could continue this dim statement by just doing that a space and then an underscore and then go to the next line and you could write var4 as integer so this will allow you to just to put dim there once and keep putting more variables it's it's a, it's a very good space saver but you do need a comma here that's one thing I didn't have uh, so if we step through it now, you got to have a comma, space, underscore, and then you could keep going. So now I have five variables here, my variable and var2, 3, 4, and 5, and they're all declared as integer. And this doesn't ha th th so this works. This is how you declare variables in, in one line, and then if you want to continue that line, just put a space, uh, a comma, space, underscore. And it, this doesn't have to be all integers too. You could make these double or dates or whatever. They could be any types. They, they could be dates or whatever you want. Okay, so that's what I wanted to show you in this video about how to declare variables in one line. 
And now I want to show you some common problems that are encountered when you're working with variables. Um, one of the first things you're going to see is that if you declare a variable as integer, like this, my variable as integer, and you try to pass in something like uh, 5.5.3, 5 uh, you want to pass in 5.3 to an integer variable. But remember that integers, uh, they don't have decimal places. So when you run this, uh, Excel is going to round this down, and what's going to be inserted in memory, if we look at it, is going to be the value 5. It's inserted in memory, not 5.3. So remember that for integers and for long, if I do long, it's going to be the same thing because long holds only integers. So if I run it again, my variable has 5 in it. That's not what I want. It rounds it down, Me meaning if it's below 5.5, then it's going to be 5. It's, if it's above 5.5, then it'll be 6. So if we do this again, you could see that my variable has 6 in it because it rounds up. It's trying to put... Uh, a decimal variable into an integer. My variable is an it holds integers so it's going to round a decimal up to an integer. So you want to make sure that your variables are declared properly. So you want to declare this double or single um, and make sure that you can handle the type of information you're processing in. So that's one error that you might encounter is you might do some calculations and then realize oh you're off by a factor of you know 0.5 or 6 or whatever. It's due to it's due to precision that's lost when uh, Excel rounds these variables if you don't declare them the right way. So make sure that you if you want to pass in a certain type of data that your variable type matches that. Next thing I want to show you along the same line is if I declare this as double and I try to pass in a, a string, well, this will cause a, an error, an explicit error. So this will cause a type mismatch error because this is trying to put a string, which is not even a number, into, an, into, an, into a number type variable like a, like a double. Notice that the one we just looked at, going from... Uh, trying to put a double into an integer didn't pop up a box so it's it's sneakier the first one we looked at is kind of a sneaky error because it doesn't pop up a box like this whereas if you try to put a string into a double or an integer um, you're gonna get an error message so this one this one is kind of um, easy to easy to catch because you're gonna get a, a box like this popping up but it's the same error same type of error you have one type of variable in this case it's a double and it holds, you know, numbers with decimal places. And I'm trying to pass in a string, and and it's not going to, uh, it's not going to work because the the type doesn't match up. Okay, so that's another error you, you could encounter. The other error, uh, not error, but the other uh, thing I want to show you is working with bytes. Um, actually, yeah, let's see. Um, bytes can store numbers between 0 and 250 or no not bytes I want to show you boolean um, they can hold true or false so you could put the value true here or you could put false so if we run this I'm gonna show you boolean variables hold true which you can see boolean it holds true or it holds false right and I I just wanna say this again I think I might have said it in the first video but it holds false right true or false those those uh, keywords those are keywords but it also can hold numbers right and I just wanna say that again so um, in your computer zero means false so if I if I run this let's look at the boolean variable it's gonna be false here because I passed in zero and it's gonna be false and anything other than zero is going to be true. So if I pass in anything other than zero, like two, the number 231, it could be anything. Anything other than zero, it's going to be true. Okay? So that's another thing I wanted to show you. Um, let's see, what else is there? Um, yeah, that's that's about it for, for this video. I really wanted to show you uh, declaring these variables in multi-line and then... Um, you know some common errors so precision make sure that if you're pa if you're using a double 
that you pass it into a double variable. Uh, if, you, if you have a double number, pass it into a double variable. Uh, one more thing I could show you is the const variable. So const is, um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Const is integer. So th this is the type of variable that is constant throughout all your programs, and you can't you cannot assign to it. So basically, if I try to assign to num, it's going to immediately cause an error because you cannot assign to a constant variable. So that's all this const means. C o n s t. When you want a variable that cannot be assigned to. Um, then use const and notice that even if I put 99 here I still get an error so a const is a variable type that it, it's it's not a it's not a type it is a keyword that protects a variable so you can only assign it once you assign it a value and then you can never assign it again this will never work um, so it'll pop up an error message like that um, so that's the const variable you, you you declare it in a line like this const um, the name of the variable as the type of the variable and then you assign it right there in that same line and then you can never assign it again and those variables um, are used when you're programming and you want to make sure that whatever you pass into this variable this initial value doesn't ever change and if you want to make sure that doesn't ever change then use a const in front of uh, the name of the variable okay so that's all I wanted to show you in this video um, one other thing uh, is check out the YouTube page uh, or go to Excel uh, VBA SQL dot com and you could you could download all these uh, Excel files and ask questions things like that if you have questions email me at Excel VBA SQL at uh, gmail dot com. Okay, thank you.